it's going on 10 o'clock at night. And I was just sitting here thinking way back when, and something came to mind and I thought, if I don't tell this story right now, I'll forget it. See, that I'm in that stage where you get it out now or it goes into the little treasure chest in the back of the brain and it gets locked in and that's where it stays and I don't ever remember it again. Yeah, that's a fun time to be in uh, around and anyway, that's beside the point. I got to remembering something when I was a child. And you're going to have to be as old as I am to remember this. Even my older sisters don't remember it, but I do. My sister's husband once had what you, I think it was like a 1929 T model Ford. It needed a lot of work done on it. It sat in the garage for years. He never did start trying to fix it up, bring it to life again. It just sat there. And after they retired and got settled in the house where my mother, my parents lived, where we grew up, they bought the house and they moved in and he kept the car in a garage beside the house. And finally one day he sold it, made made pretty good profit on that, that car. Now I'm gonna show you a picture. In case you don't know what a 1929 or 28, <clears throat> A model or T model Ford look like. I'm going to show you the picture and I want you to register it in your mind while I tell the story. Now I've got this picture. I got it off of Google so I could show it to you. I can't even see what I'm doing. But I want you to take a good look at this car. I think this is a 1929 A model Ford. Now what I want you to focus on is the back of the car. You see that little gray looking square? You might wonder what that is. That's what they call the rumble seat. It would hold two people. You might better be a skinny person because the seat wasn't very wide. But I want you to see what a 1929 A model Ford would have looked like. Of course, this one's been all painted up. Most of them back in those days were all black. But this gives you an idea of what I'm going to tell you. Focus on the rumble seat now. Okay. I remembered riding in a rumble seat one time. This was just, oh, uh, just about the time World War II started. There was a family lived next door to us. They had five kids, three girls and two boys. My brother played with the boys and the girls were younger than my sister and me, so we didn't play with them very much. They were a good family. Dow, Dow and Mossy, keep those names in mind. Mossy was as sweet a person as you'd ever want to know. Dow worked for the railroad, but every two weeks was payday Friday every two weeks. And Dow would get his paycheck, get his get it cashed at the bank, and he'd also buy 
a bottle of liquor. So by the time he got home from work that day, he was drunk. We used to sit at the kitchen window and wait. He'd come home about three in the afternoon and he came up through the fields behind our house, took the path, came through our yard, and we would watch and wait for Dow to show up. He usually was carrying something. You never knew what it was going to be, but big brown paper sacks. And he was staggering along. And one of the things Dow did before he came home, he did a little shopping. What in the world has he got this time? He might have a couple of big bags of oranges. And if he did, as he came through our yard, he came around the house to the front porch. And he would bang on the front door. Well, Mama tried to pretend she wasn't home. Well, she wasn't sure what condition Dow would be in. But he wouldn't leave until she answered the door. So she answered the door and he pushed forth a big bag of oranges. No, 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 I can't take those, I can't take those. Yes, you'll take these oranges. So she knew she had no choice. The next time he might have stopped somewhere and he bought peanuts, peanuts in the shell. Knocked on the front door. Well, Mama finally gave in and answered the door and he says, here, this is for you. No, I can't take those. She said, yes, you will. And he just turned that sack upside down and dumped those peanuts all over the front porch. That's the kind of man he was. He was a hardworking man. He was a mechanic and could repair anything. Now, just before the war, before we moved to Tennessee, Dow's younger brother, I think it was his younger brother, I can't really remember, <clears throat> because I was only about six, six years old. His brother was visiting. His name was George. George didn't reach the height of five feet. He was visiting. I don't know how long he was staying home, but he had come home from California. George was a jockey. Just the right size. I can remember how small he was. He was a jockey. He worked for Bing Crosby. Obviously, Bing Crosby had racehorses, thoroughbred racehorses, and that's who uh, George would ride for. And we'd never seen him. Of course, we didn't have TV back then, we didn't have a way of seeing anything. We just knew the stories and what he would tell us. Well, George happened to have a crush on my sister, Jeanette. She was about 14 years old then. She really didn't like this situation but he was so kind to her and so good to her. I remember the time he bought her a gold stretch bracelet that had a big heart right in the center. Oh my, we didn't have the money for things like that. I don't know if it came from Newberry's dime store or if it came from a jewelry store, but he had bought Jeanette, this beautiful stretch bracelet. She wasn't going to wear that. No, she wasn't going to wear it. George happened to have 
a car. A 1929 A model Ford. Now this is the early 40s. Well, he wanted to take Jeanette for a ride in his car. <clears throat> now, like I said, those cars were small. You barely could get two people in the front seat. And there was no back seat. All you had was a rumble seat. So there was my sister Wanda and me. Oh boy, we were going to get to ride in the rumble seat. Now, you had to be a pretty agile person to climb into that rumble seat and even more to get out of it. So we were going to get to ride in that rumble seat with air the wind blowing our, our hair. And while Jeanette was in the front seat with George, George called her Rosebud. You remember the Orson Welles movie? Citizen Kane, where he kept saying Rosebud, Rosebud. And nobody knew what he was talking about. Well, I just happened to remember that from that movie when my sister said, yes, he called me Rosebud. So we got to ride in a T model. No, this was an A model Ford in the rumble seat. Have you ever ridden in a rumble seat? How many of you can remember the cars? It's strange that that popped in my head all of a sudden, that my sister and I got to ride in the rumble seat of George Adkins' car. He was a jockey. He left Kentucky. I suppose he went back to California and continued in his profession as a jockey, riding in all of the derbies and things. Don't know whatever happened to him. But he had such a big crush on my sister and she was backing off. Now I can remember I can remember having crushes on boys, but I would never let them know it. But there were also one or two boys that had crushes on me, and I didn't like them. I didn't want anybody to know they had a crush on me. I just, that just embarrassed me to death. Never had any dates with them. Mama wouldn't have let me go on anyway. But I can remember how they would come around and they always showed themselves when you were out and about. One of them even gave me a Kodak camera. Now by this time I'm a teenager. This Kodak, Kodak camera had two little holes in the top side by side, and you could put the film in and you could roll the film up and see the numbers. You had to see the numbers. Be number one. You could take a photograph, click, get a photograph, and then you turn it and the number one moved over to the second little red dot. And you could take another picture so, I could get pictures, two pictures, on each film. You get a roll of 12, and I could get 24 pictures. I kept that camera, 
and I took it with me on my senior trip to Washington, D.C. I've got some of the photographs I took while on that tour of Washington. Put that Kodak camera in Mama's old cedar chest, the big cedar chest that matched the bedroom suit. It held all of the treasures, you might say, the good linens, the candle holders, pillowcases, bedspreads, things like that. It even held my little boy blue doll for years. Put it in there for safekeeping so none of the kids in the family would get hold of it and tear it up. I've still got little boy blue here. Got it right here. Wouldn't take anything for him. But these are the things I remembered. And I thought, I wonder how many of my viewers have ever ridden in an A model or a T model Ford and ridden in the rumble seat. Why would I remember something like that? Just one of those little things that clicks in your head and you think, oh my gosh. That was the most wonderful thing ever was climbing up. George had to help us get up in the rumble seat because it was way up on the back side. I don't know what people did when it rained because there was no protection. But we didn't have to worry about it that day. It was a beautiful day when George took my sister for a little ride in the country and Wanda and I were in the rumble seat. Think about that. Such a simple thing in life. So simple. Nothing much to it. But it's amazing what a good memory it can leave with you. And I know you can remember the things like that. Jeanette doesn't know whatever happened to George after he left. All we know is he was riding race horses. Don't know if he ever won any races because we had no way of keeping up with things like that. He didn't turn on the TV and see a race in New York or California or in Louisville, Kentucky at the Kentucky Derby. Now, I've never been to the Derby, but while I'm at it, I'm going to tell you what I know about the Derby. I was married in December of 1954, moved to Louisville, Kentucky, and my husband and I moved into a two-room furnished basement apartment on Southern Parkway. Southern Parkway in 1955 was a beautiful street. It had, on the other side of the street were these big two-story houses and there was a trail that led from Iroquois Park all the way down to where we lived. And that's where people went to ride their horses. We could sit out in the front yard and watch the horses going up and down the trail. Well, the house was also located behind Churchill Downs. We couldn't see Churchill Downs from the backyard, but we could smell it. Wasn't hard to smell those horses our first year in Louisville, time for the Kentucky Derby. Well, we couldn't afford to go. We didn't have any money, but we could stand in the front yard and watch the people come from, they came from as far away as California to go to the Kentucky Derby. They would rent rooms from private homes 
Anybody that had an extra bedroom could rent it out during the Kentucky Derby. Now in those days, there were the ladies' hats. You bought the Derby year after year after year and the hats get bigger and they get broader and they get more colorful and they get more unique and they get so outlandish and so beautiful that that's why you watch the Derby on television. They show you all these beautiful hats the ladies are wearing and the pinks and the greens and the light blue sport coats that the men are wearing and you this is your reason for watching the derby is to watch the ladies in their hats but the thrill of that is gone today because it was very unique in 1955 a lady who could afford those big, broad-rimmed hats with the huge roses and flowers and netting on them. I sat on the front porch of the house, and they were parking their cars in people's yards. Oh, you could park your car in someone's yard for three to five dollars. That's a lot of money in those days. But every neighbor was running out of a spot in their front yard for people to park their cars while they went to the Derby. Pretty exciting back then. Oh, how I would love to have had one of those hats. Today, it's not quite as fascinating because they're everywhere. And it's a matter of taste as which is the most beautiful. Some of them are just, mm, these little things perching on the side of your head like a bird, we call it a hat. But in 1955, you better have on a hat with a broad rim shade your face if you wanted to get attention and the ladies wearing those hats were getting lots of attention so the derby's coming up in a couple of weeks and i'm going to be staying home i have been to churchill down but it was not on derby day I've been to Keeneland races several times and the Red Mile Clubhouse where they have um, they have the trots and trotters and the pacers. I always liked to go to those races because they were slower and the race didn't end quite so fast and you could stand down by the rail and watch them coming around the bend. Every now and then I got to place a $2 bid. But I think the most I ever won from a ticket was $6. Um, what you call a big spender. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. Those were those days were my younger days. And I was always with several good friends. So you'll be getting ready to watch the Derby yourself. I have no idea anything about the horses that are running. But, and I just don't take that much interest. I think when you live in a town where event is regular every year, you just get used to it. And it's not quite as exciting as it would be if you had to travel a good distance to be among all of the celebrities and I'll tell you this, I don't know who the celebrities are going to be this year, but I doubt that I will recognize a single one of them. 
I don't know who your celebrities are today. I don't know who your stars, your television stars, the people broadcasting. I've lost out completely. I want to show you what someone sent me today. And this is just a sample. Now this isn't the whole thing. It's one of those greeting card type cards. And it came with butterflies. Now I can't show you the butterflies because that is something that special and I don't have them out. I fixed them for you. But this is the container they come in. And one of my good viewers, she keeps in touch. She's a very nice lady. And she said, I'm sending you something in the mail. So I checked my mail today. And this is what I opened up from an envelope. Now you can turn it around. See, that's the side. You've seen these, haven't you? Well, she says you can order these things from Amazon. You might even want to check them out, too, if you're sending something special to a sister or a friend for a birthday or an anniversary. These are just beautiful. I don't know what we do with them after we get a collection of them, but I think I can make room on top of a, a china cabinet and I'll just line them up and let my friend look at them and enjoy them. Isn't that special? Don't you just love it? So, thank you, Sheila. That's all I wanted to tell you. It's just a little spur of the moment thought. Get it out in the open before I forget it, before it goes into the treasure chest of my mind and remains there through eternity. One little story, one more little story. My two sisters say, how do you remember all these things? You do remember them. If you sit down and something comes to mind, you'll go back to your childhood. You can remember as many things as I remember. And you will enjoy bringing them to life again. Now, I told the story about Harold. It was a two-part story. And my sister told me she was, she was the one that ran around with Harold Everywhere one went, the other went in the neighborhood that was. I mean, they didn't get to go out of town. But they roamed the neighborhood for years growing up. And when she saw that I had done the story about Harold, she said, I can't watch it. I'm afraid I'll cry sentimental feelings. Harold was special. So that's just another little tidbit story for you today. And remember, I got to ride in the rumble seat of a 1929 Model A Ford. How many have you ridden in? Tell us about it. Thank you.